everyone, and welcome to another fantastic stream here on behance.net slash Adobe Live. That's the best place to watch this stuff. You can watch on YouTube if you want, but you wouldn't be able to ask questions of me and my fabulous guest, who this week is Maddie Belwar. How are you doing, Maddie? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, so good. So, so good to and Halloween. Halloween for me has just a few associations. One of them is Maddie Bellwall because I love it when you start painting around this time of year. Thank you so much. I love painting autumn and Halloween scenes. Just like something mm. about the color combination, mm. everything, the mood. I love it. So good. So I'm really looking forward uh, to what you're doing. As usual, Maddie, we've got our fabulous community with us chatting away amongst themselves already <laughs> and excited to see this. We've got Sandrine got gareth we've got some guy called tony harmer stay away from him he's weird <laughs> we've got somebody called mothership hi mothership and jimmy and evie is in there oh man scroll 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 another guy called tim i've heard talk of this person um he sounds great though mind you linda's here doris <laughs> is here Mirko is here oliver hey 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 how are you doing and andreas guten tag Oh, so good. SFX. Excellent. Kirsten in the house. <laughs> Hi, there everyone. They're <laughs> all here. So tell so, me, tell me, tell me. All right. Well, What's I have deal today? a little sketch ready so we can get right into the good part um, and yes. begin with painting. Um, I created a sketch of a little um, pumpkin house in the forest. I'm imagining this kind of like a witch's cottage or something. And yeah. as I started drawing it, um, the shape started getting more like cutesy and round and then all of a sudden I could see a pumpkin in it and I was like okay we're just gonna go with that <laughs> I like it I love the roof structure on that as well it's so cool oh thank you yeah so I hope that I can get sort of an organic look to it of course it has like windows and stuff like that um but I want to bring in some or organic shapes to the actual architecture yes. and kind of fit in the environment so <clears throat> that is the goal excellent all right, and I'm, I'm going to be um, focusing first and uh, most importantly on values and color in this, um, because when you're, especially when you're trying to paint fast, I think what gets you um, furthest along most quickly is just blocking in the basic shapes and focusing on getting the values right. And then all of a sudden the image starts to come together really quick. Mm. Yes. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool and um, make a selection of my sketch, just tracing around. And um, I'm using shift to add to the selection. Yep. And then alt to subtract to like correct little things and let's get the main structure selected. Yes. So how have things been generally? How's everything going over over there in that there, Netherlands? Great. I've been yeah. really enjoying the autumn vibes this year. I um, I actually carved a pumpkin this year, which I hadn't done for a couple of years. So that was fun. I love doing that. I do some uh, typically. There's um, there's a, a, a residence that we we volunteer at from time to time, my wife and I. Uh, for people who are really, really, uh, really, really dis disabled or restricted in, in well, you know, very, very poorly. And uh, we go there. I carve pumpkins for them. So they've got some out on the front. Oh, that's that. so nice. That's fun. My, my, my wife went to the pumpkin farm while I was in L.A. and got tons of stuff. The front of our house is covered in them. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I tried, I had to limit myself because the um, pumpkin farm had so many cool different shapes, mm -hmm. different types and colors and gourds and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, oh, no, OK, I'm getting two pumpkins. <laughs> I'm not going to go crazy. <laughs> I know we've definitely gone for crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there's um, there's a guy I know in Seattle called Jason Hoppy. Uh, he decorates the front of his house and he, he if he's got 10 pumpkins on there, he's got 100. He's got... <laughs> He has this crazy, crazy thing. And like, you know, like a lot of American houses have that kind of shelf just before the roof with sort of uh, attic roof, attic mm -hmm, rooms mm -hmm. and stuff like that. He has that entire thing covered. So his <laughs> house is quite the spectacle. Uh, he should probably start a pumpkin farm at that point, you know, to um, supplement. <laughs> start his own. 
<laughs> he was telling me he was telling I was speaking to him last week and he was telling me that two uh, two women moved in across the street from him <laughs> and uh, and the the realtor was saying to them about yeah oh right this is the this, and this of course is across from the pumpkin house and they were going <laughs> have we just made a terrible mistake <laughs> like, what's you the pumpkin house <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds creepy and weird but there you go yeah that's oh. awesome Bruce is in the chat as well hi Bruce Bruce is a hey. regular visitor to your uh, Wednesday stream as well, That's of course. Great. As is F- SFX on there as well. So uh, Oliver needs to go to the pumpkin farm one day. Yes. <laughs> so I'm looking at the base colors of the elements in the scene right now yep. and just quickly blocking them in. Not too much shading, not too much detail so far, yep. just beginning with that. And do you have a system for value checking? Do you like use a color layer or anything to just? Yeah, yeah? I do. I um, I can show you guys what I do because I, I used to use the color layer and then someone um, taught me this really awesome trick, which I honestly can't remember who taught it to me, which is sad, but I've been doing this for years. Um, so you can set a shortcut for yourself. It's the um, the proof setup. Uh, oh. I'm not do you know what you know where I'm going with this? I, I know where you're going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me show you Was guys. Was it me a... that taught you this? <laughs> <laughs> I I think we talked about it before, but did, yeah. I'll show you guys how to set this up for yourself. Um, you only have to do it once, and then you're good to go. Yeah. So you go to View Proof Setup Custom, and then the um, pop up window here under Device to Simulate. This is the only thing you have to change, yeah. and you want to select Working Gray Dot Gain Twenty yeah. Percent, and that's all you have to do. You click OK, and then um, after that. Um, you press control Y anytime you press control Y it'll turn it into black and white or back into color and you can check your values and you can also paint when it's in the black and white mode you can color pick and paint and it's going to color pick and paint the real colors which is super awesome no, love it yeah I don't think it was me really I probably just I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, of the color layer but just filled with gray and turn that in you know, a set to blend mode of color yeah that is also on and off yeah. It's a very intuitive way to do it. I feel mm. like, you know, it just makes sense. But both work very, very well. Yeah. Every once in a while, I like to paint in black and white mode. If I feel like I'm really confused about my values in a scene, then I'll turn into black and white and just paint for a while, just color pick and paint. And then when the, they're starting to work, the values are starting to work better, then I'll go back into color mode. So. I don't like it. Um, I'm good. Do you, oh, sorry. Use a, do you use a value checker for your so for your traditional stuff? Do you have one of those like value checker cards? No, I and I've I've talked to people about different ideas like taking a photo real quick and turning it into black and white and stuff. I just there's not I haven't found a way to do it that feels like convenient enough. You know what I mean? So I just yeah, haven't yeah. stuck with anything. I just kind of step back, look at it, just try my best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Squinting works, I think. Squinting's a good way of doing it. Yeah, that I mean, helps. It, yeah, I mean, you don't lose the colour, but you, you kind of focus slightly, well, or, or not focus, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Man, right. you are fast, though, Maddie. <laughs> you are oh, proper thanks. rapid. I love it. I have some um, convenience brushes here I'm going to use in this piece that I think will really help us out speed wise too um these are some brushes that I've made so mm, yeah I'm a fan I buy them oh thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so for the background trees and stuff just to get something in there and then we can add some some shading or lighting to them just kind of see where see where they fit yeah like something like that You know, and... I think I've got a few in my defaults. I think I've got your natural. Uh, I can't without launching Photoshop. Can't tell you the name. The maybe know, the traditional just... texture. Yes. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of. Yeah, I guess because I enjoy, um, you know, the traditional painting. I really like to create brushes that have that kind of those kind yep. of textures to them. But so we got a nice big moon. 
Oh, I have created yeah. like a, a <laughs> seasonal brush set for like Halloween stuff. So I've got some spooky brushes in here. Um, so I've got a few different like moons and things and it's just fun. I don't know. I, I have so much fun doing that. Mm. I love it. I don't have this one, I think. So I'm going to, I'll be by your sword in just a wee while. <laughs> All right, so I'm just focusing on getting everything in the scene and then I can go back to each individual element and kind of spruce them up and add detail and stuff. Sometimes it's hard for me to have the um, discipline because I, I get excited about working on a specific area. Like right now, I really want to paint on the house, but I'm thinking, okay, just wait, get everything blocked in and then we're going to go back to the house and do the fun stuff. Uh, it's all good. Uh, Tim's saying he's so fast and good because I can be fast too but it will look like a three-year-old drew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny part is that's how so often it starts. I feel like even, you know, mm. just depending on the painting, sometimes the early stages are just like that no matter what, you know? Big crayons. I'm a fan of big crayons. Yeah, use big crayons to start off with. Forget about details. Until yeah, you're weighing. that is totally a uh, um, good technique. Like if you mm. use a, a material that doesn't let you get into detail too early, you know, that's a way to kind of stop yourself from falling into that <laughs> yeah, because you literally cannot do it all you yeah. can do is concentrate on on getting shapes in there mm -hmm. charcoal sticks as well when i was i like those i'm going to turn my um sketch layer on multiply mode and lower the opacity so it's not carrying us so much um it helps a lot when i do this because i feel like my painting actually starts to take place of the sketch if i don't yeah. do this you know, you get to that point where you you think everything looks great, then you turn off the sketch layer and you're like, ah, <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's so, a good idea to rein it in. <laughs> yeah. This helps that uh, transition go a little more <laughs> smoothly. All right. So I want to start with the windows now because I feel like they're just going to make such a difference in the values. They're going to be like one of the brightest things. Yeah. So I'm going to start with that. I'm just going to make a selection of the overall shape of them. I just love scenes with any type of glowing lighting. Yeah, it's yeah. so much fun. And especially things, you know, adding that bit of warmth. Yeah. Yeah, so good. All right, so we've got, we can um, erase out and kind of improve some of my quick selection stuff here. Uh, but now we have this on its own layer, so I can come up here uh, on the layers palette and check the lock transparency, yep. just click that box. Um, I think this is really fun for doing this glow effect because I can take the airbrush and um, I think I'm actually going to start by darkening this a little bit, but then I'll go back and choose that brighter yellow and kind of tap it down more in the middle. Yeah. You start to get that glow. I noticed for a glowing effect, the best thing to do is not have the whole area super super bright have some areas less bright and then some areas more bright and it just makes it feel more glowy than if it was yeah. all super bright absolutely yeah um, i mean if you do something like use a gradient then it's just going to look mechanical and and not good <laughs> yeah i think i like to um create gradient effects with the airbrush for that reason it's yeah. kind of like diy gradients in a way like you're still getting a gradient effect but it's slightly more organic yeah. Uh, Galana Art in the chat. Hi. Hi. Uh, yes. Insta Moon. Excellent, says SFX. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sandrine saying you have black and white filters for cameras if they still exist. <laughs> Buy two. That's true. That is true. Yeah. That's an true. idea. I quite often have the, the, uh, the screen on my camera set to grayscale so that I can frame something up using the values. Uh, Mirko in the chat. Hi, the moon brush is my fave. Instant moon is always nice. <laughs> it Kirstie is. loves big pencils and pastels. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver says crayons is about my drawing level. Well, <laughs> not crayons, man. Crayons are awesome. Yeah, super fun. Uh, Doris, uh, my favorite brush from Maddie is the watercolor soft large. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. That's always nice to hear. 
And Ali in the chat. This already looks so good and feels so good to see Maddie painting again after so long. Oh, thank you. Oh, Thanks for being here. We've got a lot of fans on here, I think. Do you guys ever use the mode? Do you ever put your brush on a mode? Because it's it's I rarely yeah. do this. Every once in a while, um, for anybody who doesn't know, it, just like with the adjustment layers, you can also um, when you have a brush selected, you can go up here to mode and and choose like color dodge yep. and all that. I think I'm gonna try a color dodge with a textured brush and just add. Oops, I'm gonna lock the transparency and just add a little bit of. Yeah, it's a good texture. way to do it. All of the painting tools support uh, blending modes, which is good. And the one that you can access very quickly, which I, Sarah Coleman, who comes on quick. In fact, over my, uh, you can just about see it over my shoulder. There's a skull picture just back there. Yes. Um, by Sarah Coleman, Inky Mole. And uh, I taught her a shortcut by holding down the tilde key to temporarily access the clear blending mode which means that the brush you're painting with suddenly becomes an eraser. has all the properties of the brush, but... That's right, and that's a yeah. somewhat recent update, right? Not Yeah, not... about three, four years ago. Wow, okay, okay, it's been around yeah. longer than I thought. Mm. Very cool. Because before, well, actually, the tilde key, I'm going to say three years ago for the tilde key, but the blend mode was in there before, but you would have to access it via one of the blend mode shortcuts for the tool, which is shift alt R for the clear blending mode. I've Why been... do I know this stuff? <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> I love it. I've been Things meaning do, but... to practice that tilt key, um, just get that into my you know, muscle memory yeah, and yeah. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, it's um it's handy. Yeah, I mean, for, for her, for her particular work, it was transformative. She, she still awesome. talks about it now. She, it was on Twitter the other week. Uh, Emma in the chat. Hello, hello. Hey, hey. Fantastic. Uh, Vanessa uses soft light for shadows. Cool. Uh, Sandrine uses dissolve, clear, and sometimes hard light. When I paint over a base cool. color. Yeah. So they're they're in there. That's and cool Oliver to is talking hear. about. Oliver's saying about the picture, I thought that looked quite inky molish. I've got three uh, inky mole Halloween uh, prints, Oliver. I'm going to swap one of those out for one of them next week. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think uh, yourself, Madeline, and Sarah, you're my favourite people to watch work at this time of year. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the colors are just, I love it. I love it. And we're getting mm. into it. Um, like every time I go outside, it's like, it's, it's, I think right now the colors are at their peak here. So I'm just like, mm. it's so nice. It's been kind of a crazy year here for, for autumnal colors because we had that extended spell of, of very, very hot weather. Yeah. And in some places it's caused this complete explosion of color. I noticed when I came back at the weekend how different our, our garden looked. I missed, unfortunately, the best of it. Um, but we've got a, like a line of fir trees all down the side there and then some other trees blended in with them. They're quite crazy at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine these trees, um, if they would have some kind of like a little bit of warm light bouncing onto them from the yeah. house. Let me experiment with that a little bit. Yes. Like it. I yeah. Like yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Eva in the chats talking <laughs> about dissolve blend mode, res responding to Sandrine. Uh, Eva, one of dissolve blend mode is one of those. So there are three elements to a blend mode, and dissolve is one that requires two elements to be active. So you've got to have opacity working with the blend mode in order for it to work. So it has to be less than a hundred percent for it to work. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So oh. if you just choose dissolve on its own, it doesn't really do too much. But as soon as you start bringing the opacity down, then it gets much more interesting. Cool. I should play with that because dissolve is one of the ones that I rarely use because, yeah, I just haven't found a way to fit mm. it in. And it always um, has a really intense look to it. Mm. And I'm just like, hmm, how can I use that? <laughs> yeah. Super grainy. Yeah. I think Tim told me at one point um, 
Tim told me at one point that it's always the same pattern, I think, underneath. I can't remember if that was quite huh. correct, but I dare say I'll say in the chat. Da -da -da. Bruce asking if I've done any autumn paintings. I have a few. It's photography time for me, really, though, autumn. Draw later. <laughs> <laughs> Good, take all your, your reference, reference photos. Reference, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then I can get autumnal in the in the sort of springtime. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get some darker values in here. Yep. There's Rafi's glow saying... coming from everywhere. <laughs> so it's Rafi saying that bounce light looks so nice. Oh, thank was... you. Umicorn lurking in the chat. Lurking. <laughs> <Probably> <laughs> No worries, Eva. Uh, Mirko's saying dissolve mode basically eliminates the anti-aliasing, so it creates pixel perfect marks. Pretty cool effect with an airbrush. It can. You can get great spatter effects. Uh, you know that sort of stuff. Have you ever used an airbrush, Maddie? Have you ever used one in your in your work? Um, you... like a real physical one. Yeah. Um, I have used one a long time ago when I was um working for a company that made like artificial interiors for aquariums and stuff and we used okay. to spray them oh, right. okay cool <laughs> really random but fun job <laughs> well there's i'm gonna add that to my notes that's, <laughs> that's a new note notes on the in the maddie bell war page <laughs> aquariums <laughs> aquarium airbrush yeah, yeah, we did some aquariums for, you know, public aquariums, like for yeah, the yeah. big like shipwrecks and stuff like that. It was really yeah. fun. Well, I've got a 350 litre tank here, so just come on down. Oh, and just, just, just... oh my gosh. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so we I didn't have to be too precise because I was airbrushing like shading on rocks and like algae yeah. and that kind of stuff. So it was like, there was a lot of room for um, error. But you know when you get an airbrush and you change that, you make an extreme angle for the tilt of the brush mm -hmm. to the ground, you get that dense overspray effect. Yeah. So you get that blotching. And Dissolve is good for that sort of stuff. So if you want to emulate those sort of 1920s, 1930s posters, Dissolve can sometimes work really, really well uh, with that. Cool. Good effect. Uh, Oliver saying there's a few maples in the trees outside my house. They've been going through some nice bright colours. We have a maple and it's bright, bright red at the moment. It's crazy. crazy oh, color. that sounds wonderful. Uh, Sandrine saying dissolve on a blur filter, for example, radial blur gives interesting effects. Yeah, that'd be cool. And Tim is confirming that's right. It's always the same pattern, which allows you to stack different layers using different opacities. There you go. Good with the tips. That's awesome. See, I learn something new every time I stream <laughs> the chat and you guys just, it's so it's good awesome. though, isn't it, to do that. Yeah. You know, get a little... Yeah. And Bruce saying same here, Tony photography. Yeah. It's a great time to come out and, ca and catch the amazing changes of nature. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Angus in the house. Hi, Angus. Great seeing Maddie's workflow painting with light. Thank you. And that's Sandrine has got in quotes. I was an artificial interior for aquarium artist. I know <laughs> it's honestly Sandrine. It's in my notebook. Right now. <laughs> that one will be that one will be coming back and in, in a future stream. <laughs> so, so Maddie, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool, though. All right, so I've been painting the house for a while. I think I'm going to simplify some of my layers. Um, like, I think it might be time to to merge the windows and everything to do. I like to keep the layers somewhat clean. So I'll show you guys yeah. what I have so far. Um, we have this background gradient. We have the moon. We have these trees, another tree, and then everything else, basically. And then we have the sketch <laughs> layer. <laughs> so. I think I'm going to start working in the foreground a little bit. I want to add some foliage and some pumpkins and like create a little pathway. So we're going to do some landscaping. Is that some nice bats you've got in the top there over that? Movie? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. When I left college, I worked for the Royal Society for Nature Conservation here for 
uh, a while. I worked on two projects, one in Warwickshire, one in Dar- and the one I worked at longest in Derbyshire. But I lived with a bat expert. So that's where the Batman connection coming in. Well, no, I mean, I've always loved Batman. But... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I was at Warner, actually. I was at Warner on Thursday last week, just looking at Batmobiles. I was trying to buy one a little while ago. And I drove one. I drove the 1960s, or a copy of the 1960s uh, Batmobile not so long oh, ago. Oh, cool. Present from my daughter, Natasha. You're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Not really my favourite. I don't have favourites. I do, but ones that buy me Batmobile-related presents. But no, 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 no. I love bats. Bats are fascinating. I've got so many drawings I've done of bats. So many. Some survived that where other bits of my work did not. So. Um, where I live now, I've been pretty lucky. We we get to see bats fairly often um, in the summer. There's like mm-hmm. this park and right near our neighborhood that we go to all the time. And they just, you know, if you go out at dusk or like a little bit after and they just fly from tree to tree, they'll fly mm. right by you. They're so fast and they're so cute. I just, I don't know. I love them. <laughs> no, they're amazing. I mean, physiologically, they're incredible. I mean, some species, they can take their heartbeat from four beats a minute. Yeah, so there's a there's a tiny bat here. It's about as big as a, a as an adult thumb, called Pipistrel. Pipistrellus Pipistrellus, so cute. Look like tiny <laughs> little doggies, and uh, they can go from four beats a minute to two hundred and twenty beats a minute, almost instantly. How on earth? <laughs> it's just incredible. That is wild. I didn't really know that was possible. I guess. I, I've only heard of like whales can also, mm. I guess a lot of creatures like that that have to regulate how much oxygen they're using. Yeah. But I, I had no idea with bats. Mm. That's really cool. And bats, uh, I mean, bats do so much good for the environment. Also, if you don't like bugs flying around, bats are good news for you because bats will eat thousands of insects and oil. They'll eat, well, not literally thousands, but, you know, a group of bats will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they will eat, uh, uh, I think, so I can't remember exactly what the ratio is, but some will eat a significant proportion of their body weight in bats, in bats, in insects, <laughs> in insects every night. Well, they can come to my backyard anytime. Yeah. <laughs> People think about, they go, but what about vampire bats? If you're a horse or a cow, <laughs> then vampire bats are something to be bothered about. <laughs> They're not interested in people. Have you ever seen a vampire bat? No. They do like a kind of weird dance. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> they're real ankle biters. They um they basically land after a fashion near to uh cattle. That's that's their main kind of source. And um they kind of jump over like side to side. <laughs> like like I don't know how to describe it. But it's sort of hop, 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 ding. <laughs> I don't know. I've not seen that. <laughs> I'm yes. trying to find a video, probably. <clears throat> Amazing. And uh, pardon me. And uh, the uh, there's a fisher bat in Australia, which has super, super long legs. They're also striking because they're white. So they look really, <laughs> they actually look more scary. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine you're that. You're yeah, not expecting really, it. really long legs and can just sweep across the water and just pull uh, fish from the surface of the water. So many species. Long-eared bats were my favourite. I really like long-eared bats. They look super cute. And hence the name. They've got really long ears. Anyway, this is more bat chat than you really <laughs> needed, I think. <laughs> I feel like I've learned a lot. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> Uh, Eva gets bats above our house. Here's the thing, right? If you get pipistrels in your house and you start seeing pipistrels flying around the house, the chances are you've got maybe a couple of hundred uh, in there and they only need a really, really tiny little gap to get into and they live underneath soffits and fascia boards. Excellent things. And their poop is really good for your garden. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Okay, so we can come to my backyard and eat the bugs, fertilize. Like they're good so good thing. that's my underlying message right <laughs> is it is it they're brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> right. 
like that sneaky bit of realignment there. I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, I did a flip and I'm like, hmm, we look a little wonky. Didn't see it until I did the flip. So yeah. that's the purpose, right? It's a really mm -hmm. handy thing to do. And I think another thing I'm going to do at this stage is behind the house, I'm going to make a new layer and I think add a little bit of like mistiness in the air because um, hopefully, yeah, we can get some separation between the house and the trees behind there Hope to see what feels right. Um, wow. I bring this tree down a little bit. Bruce has been having fun going through your new brush pack. Ew. Also saying, really, Batmobile? Yes, it's on my Instagram, uh, Bruce. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tim loves the fact that I've had so many other separate jobs. <laughs> He's always, it must have been after your gig as a roller coaster operator. He keeps coming up with these wacky things. <laughs> maybe, so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got a little spooky mistiness back there. That's working beautifully. Thank you. I think I want to continue with that. Um, adding depth, I want to add some more trees behind, like a little further back. I'm not sure value wise, so I'm going to just pop them in, and then we can um, maybe change the color or lighting a little bit. But I've got some spooky trees, um, spooky tree brushes. These were in the Halloween, Halloween brushes. So pop them in back there. So if people wanted to get hold of your amazing brush packs, Maddie, where should we direct them? <laughs> um, well, uh, I do have a bunch of brushes that I give to um, subscribers here on Behance. That's where the Halloween brushes can be found. Uh... And then I also sell. Um, my brush packs on ArtStation Marketplace and um, on uh, Gumroad. Yeah, like I think that's where I bought them, ArtStation, I think. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So if we want to um, <clears throat> make it more easy to see the silhouettes, we just have to put a little bit of value difference in between the overlapping yeah. things. So yeah, these trees in the back, um, I'm just gonna go to image, adjust, hue, saturation, and just kind of, play with maybe how we can separate them. Just maybe make them a little lighter. Just back on bats for a minute, Maddie. Sorry, Karen was just <laughs> asking if I've seen a fruit bat. They are huge. I have. I've seen a flying fox. Uh, I've stared it straight in the eyes from about maybe 18 inches away. Uh, and the really big ones can have a wingspan of around five feet. They're a very big creature. Wait, what? Flying fox has a wingspan of about five feet. Pretty sure. I had the, one no I, idea. the one that I saw did not have a wingspan of five feet, but okay. I'm just going to, do you know what? I'm going to use Google. Uh huh. Because I'm five feet two, so that thing has basically my <laughs> height yeah. as a wingspan. Uh... Yes, megabats. <laughs> they are a megabat. A megabat. Okay. That's mega awesome. Bat. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to find the external characteristics. Da -da -da. Longest form of length. Only about some uh, wingspan is 1.5 meters here. This is Wikipedia. Uh, four feet, 11 inches. So five feet, bar an inch. There oh, wow. You go. But I've seen one. Super big eyes. <laughs> actually the bat chat is going down very well <laughs> i've got to know this maddie do you like batman i i like batman yes i i'm not like um pa very passionate one way or the other no 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 no. <laughs> no no it's all good i've seen the movies and i i, I yeah. like them but i'm not like um yeah super batman aficionado or anything no this is fun <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and Tim's directing uh, people to your bee hearts, which is good. Oh, thank you. Oh, and Sandrine. Now, that's an interesting factoid, Sandrine. Today is the anniversary of the publishing of Dracula. 
Oh, that is very cool. How about that? There's so many people who know Dracula, but I wonder how many people have read it. It's a very good book. I have not read it. Yes. I have read Frankenstein, and that was really yes. good. I've read that a few times. Very good. All right, we're going to get some faces on these pumpkins. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to lasso tool it and just select, just make little little faces here. It'll do just random, make some happy, some angry. Yes. <laughs> ah. Oliver's chipping in with Teropus Vampirus, a Latin name, uh, not the inc not an incantation he's saying. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> and in the, in the question, do you like Batman, Maddie? Ryan's put that pause tells the whole story. <laughs> I'm like, when you say like, you know, because there's different levels of. <laughs> yeah. Rafi's saying Batman talk. I'm in. <laughs> Sandrine uh, read it a, a long time ago. I think Dracula. Yeah. So Caroline's read it. Cool. Uh, and Tim, Tim in with some more, right, here's some factoids everywhere. I need some background factoid music for this while Maddie's painting. <laughs> Today is also International Artist Day. So happy International Artist Day, oh, amazing yes. artist Maddie Bellwalk. Oh, really that's so nice. And it's also World Pasta Day. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely a fan. I'm going to say, do you know what? Given a choice, I'm going to celebrate International Artist Day with you, Maddie. I think that's that's Aww. that's my choice. I'll have to move past the day next year. I'll have to be on a different day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Sandrine <laughs> said, is it a day to make a pasta necklace and paint them? Good yeah, fan. a little macaroni art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen King's books are my spooky season favourites. He's still such a good author. So prolific. Now Bruce is saying he guess he has to make some pasta. Oh, and so Mirko's saying I'm Italian. It's always pasta day for me. Ah, <laughs> oh, and Ryan's saying sweet. I'm both an artist and a collection of noodles. <laughs> so it's <laughs> two times Shelley for me. Dracula pasta and artist. What a fab day. So I'm using the same technique uh, from the windows yeah. to just add that glow. Through the pumpkins. I'm gonna turn off the sketch layer. Do you ever animate any of these, Maddie? Do you ever sort of I mean I have um collaborated with my partner to animate um a couple things for my stream, like the starting soon and ending uh yeah. screen. We animated yeah, yeah. those. That's yes. the extent of it. He did the after effects. I just did the different layers, the art um and with separate layers. I haven't done the animation myself, but um I don't know. I think it's so fun. I'm just thinking if you played with the, if you had the, um, once you've got the painting set, mm -hmm. all of those glow layers that you've, or, or, or the glow and all of the light that you've got in there, you could actually get the Photoshop timeline open and just either move those layers around. Like add or, like a little twinkle kind of. Yeah. So just get some, because all you need there for, to do that it's just a tiny bit of oscillation right just to get the effect that would be so fun oh yeah well maybe on a cold dark rainy night madeline <laughs> you could yeah think, that sounds good let's do some animation <laughs> all right i'm gonna make a little little smoke coming out of the chimney here so i'm just going to uh trace this shape from my sketch and then We'll fill it in with a little smoky texture. Yes. Chris saying, what awesome atmosphere. Love the mood. Oh, thank you. And Bruce is saying, he notices there's no timer today. No, it's because it's an Adobe live stream, this one. We don't, <laughs> we don't have the timers. 
That's a very useful panel, though, that little add-on. Yeah, it is. I love it. Love it for studies and things. Caroline is in awe of how fast you're working. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so if I lower the opacity on the moon a little bit, then we can actually see the, the smoke again. And I think it works well enough. Mm. Trying to find that balance. Maybe if I put like the shadows of the moon up there, it'll also read better. I used to have an action to generate smoke. It involved using um, the wave filter. Really? And yeah, yeah. So what I do is uh, generate a low wave, and then use the. F you know, when you create an, uh, like a filter, you can go to edit fade, and uh, and drop that filter back a bit. I used to drop it right the way back. Then run the wave filter again, then drop it back again, run the wave filter again, and just slightly changing the generators a little bit each time. And it used to work a charm. Cool. Hmm. But not as attractive as the smoke that you're doing right now. <laughs> Thanks. Doing a little stylized smoke. All right. I'm hoping, yeah, I think we can get rid of the sketch layer. Those are like the last couple of things. Oh, wait, no, we need to add the bats and then I can get rid of the sketch layer. <laughs> yeah, after all I the bat know. chat, you can't. You can't I know. Not have can't. The bats. <laughs> They're just kind of like a little quick, quick sketchy bats. Hopefully. Evie asking about some animation help on Fresco. Who should ask? Uh, there's a help X page for Fresco. Should help you there. It's a good community. Jackie Mulvar, of course, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Carl Webster's brushes has a new smoke set. Do you have a smoke Ooh. brush, Maddie? Um, I have some like cloudy brushes, um, like misty fog. I kind of use those interchangeably with smoke. Yeah. But I always love oh, that's right. Didn't brushes. you use one behind the front tree? You did, didn't you? Just, yeah, yeah, that was like a misty one. Yeah. So I'm trying to play with curves a little bit here. Sometimes just try it out and actually maybe it's not what I was looking for. Mm. Um, I want to mess with the lighting a little bit on the, the house. And mm. I think I think I'm just going to paint in some more rim light because you can never have too much rim light. <laughs> Bruce is loving the stylized smoke. I'm actually a bit I'm a bit entranced by that smoke because it's it's leaving you know everything else has got kind of a it a very distinct style and then the smoke <laughs> is kind of graphic. Yeah. But it works. You think so? Yeah. It's not too much. No. Okay. I like it. Well to to my own to yeah. my own taste but I I think yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm trying to embrace um, stylizing things more lately. I've just mm. been interested in that. You know, it's interesting how your tastes change over time. Um, but lately, that's something that's been inspiring me a lot is stylized work and kind of uh, being able to indicate something without necessarily painting it super realistically. Mm. And so I guess um, there's like a little like shift or something happening in my style these days, but I'm, I'm having fun. I've been working on a Halloween book, and I kid you not, for 20 years. Whoa. 20 years. And part of the reason it's gone on 20 years is because of my work. You know, I can only fit it in between other things. Mm -hmm. and my work schedule has been getting so crazy. Fortunately, settled now. But I get to a stage where I think, right, okay, got a quiet period now. So out comes the box with all the stuff in it, and I start working on it again and then a few years ago i thought no do you know what i don't like these characters anymore <laughs> oh my so god i, I can imagine that right the way back to the beginning and that's i'm kind of almost at the end of that that stage now i was working with uh julia Seeger, one of the hosts from germany a good friend of mine um and i guess the course and host here in the uk from time to time um a couple of years ago i was working with her on it i was just I was just running the new newer developments by her to see because I really do want to finish this while I'm still on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it would be awesome. I think it's well, I mean the thing's written. 
Mm -hmm. That's not the problem. The sequence is there. It's just, I just looked at the original characters and thought, no, they're yeah. so like 20 years ago. Not, not, <laughs> not a surprise, right? No spoiler in there at all. I can totally understand that because if I had a project ongoing for so long, I can imagine I would be doing the same kind of stuff because, you know, I, I keep, you know, over the years, you, you yeah. change your, I don't know, your vision, your preferences and stuff. Or maybe share, I'll maybe share that with you at some point. You can have a look. Yeah, I'd love to see that. And Shauna Lim, one of the other hosts, she is on the other side of the studio, so I can't uh, easily get it. But she is just on the illustrations for a children's book that came out a little while ago. It's really cool. Awesome. I like that. It's a very nice little style and plenty of those warm reds and oranges. I think you would like that. Yeah. Honestly, a lot of um, following a lot of children's book illustrator illustrators on social media yeah. this past like couple years, I think, has influenced my <clears throat> like style and and preferences. I, I think I just really enjoying how they stylize things and mm. find like creative ways to illustrate a scene instead of just like exactly what it is. You know what I mean? Mm. In reality and that kind of imagination. Yes. So a little while ago, just a, a few weeks ago, or actually maybe a couple of months ago now, thinking about it, we created a new segment here on Adobe Live uh, called the Arcateers. And that was myself, uh, Julia Seeger, who I mentioned a little while ago, mm -hmm. and Raquel Costa uh, drawing together. We had the same prompt and we were all doing our own take on the prompt. And it was so based, fun. It was good fun. It was based on... The idea came from uh, a Disney thing where Disney sent it. I think it was called Five Artists, One Tree. I've seen had, that. Have you? Right. Yeah. So yeah. It's like that. So we, we were all drawing different things from this. And we, we put a load of prompts out and we, mm -hmm. we chose, we got the uh, community to choose from the prompts. And we did Prehistoric Pigeon. I'm just, I'm fishing now, Maddie. I'm just thinking, I wonder if Maddie would be interested in in doing a, I would absolutely an arcateer session. Oh, absolutely. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Right. I'll make a note in tomorrow's meeting. I should, I should be mentioning that quite a lot. Heads up. people <laughs> <are doing them. laughs> Cool. Please, 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 please. Please, 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 please. Oh, that'd be so I'll just much keep fun. saying please until people get so annoyed. They just go, whatever it like, is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I stream um, here on Behance, we do a lot of uh, studies, you know, photo studies and things mm. just for practice. And, you know, we kind of get a little bit of that effect too, because everyone who decides to give it a shot at painting the um, whatever the topic is, you know, we'll get to see everyone's paintings at the end. And yeah. um, we do, you do end up with a bit of that effect of like seeing everyone's different way of visualizing something and different styles. And it's really inspiring. And, and I feel like there's so much to learn because you can be a little bit stuck on something and then you see how someone else was able to illustrate mm. that thing. And it can be really helpful. No, it's got that. I love that about your streams when you make the photo reference available at the beginning. You have it all there. You know, it's it's in all your notes and everything, and then people can just work along with you if they want to, or just mm -hmm. watch it a later. I love that. Shaping up beautifully. Thank you. And uh, yes, that idea of you coming along at Arcteers is fantastic. Please do it again. Oh, it's going to be done again. It's just a matter of, you know, rotating. The, there was an idea, and this was Tim's fault, so you can't blame <laughs> me for this one, Tim. You said about having a fourth Arcateer on. That it's, intent, it's technically very intense for Tim <laughs> <laughs> to do, but, you know. But yes. The, uh, and that, yeah, that idea is going to, yes, that would be awesome in capital letters. So there oh. we go. So, uh, yeah. And looking forward to the next Arcateers. See, that's gonna be, you're making my job in tomorrow's meeting. <laughs> Wednesdays, Wednesday afternoons is when we have our have our team meeting. So you're making my job so much easier. Screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody it. wants it. Look. Yes. <laughs> Thank in you, recently, Chad. <laughs> in recent news, Tony is taking over Adobe Live scheduling. I'm not. <laughs> Uh, Melanie's going to beat me now with a stick. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, and uh, you're getting backing from Sandrine. In fact, she says, I am backing that idea. Oh, Maddie and yes. Arc tears, so I'm going to make that happen. Thank you, Chad. I'd like it to be long. I'd like it to be an, uh, but we, On two occasions, I think, we've done what we call an XSL, XXL stream. So they're, they're two hours, not, not an hour, not 90 yeah. minutes. Two mm -hmm. hours. I think we've done it twice. It sounds good to me. Chris is saying, how often is it? Well, the answer, Chris, is not often enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a periodical. It's a thing. We've got so many little segments that we weave in. And also, of course, it, because it's relying on more than, you know, two people's availability. It's... Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to think um, the house. I feel like oh, I'm just looking at values and I, I, I'm i not sure if I need to go a little darker. You know what, but this is what we have adjustment layers for. So I can just try it out with the curves. I'm gonna clip it onto the main layer here and just see if like the shadows, it does like saturate a lot sometimes when you mess with this, but then we can, we can take care of that separately. I'm just trying to decide. Whoopsie. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Mm. Sometimes curves is fun to just, I mean, sometimes I sit here and just add points and just see what weird stuff happens. Well, the thing is, don't forget, <laughs> you can also apply a blend mode to that curves adjustment layer. That's true. So, you know, you could, you could tinker with that as well. We can mask part of it away because I didn't really like yeah. what it did to the windows. But um, I feel like the outside, I want a little bit more. A little bit more punch right at the edge. So I'm going to mask away some of this. That can work. And then I love selective color. I've been just obsessed with it <laughs> ever since I started. Ever since I discovered selective color, it's like my new favorite. Yeah, handy. Yeah, it's so handy. Yeah. Actually, Melanie Divide, uh, who actually does do the Adobe Live scheduling, has just popped into the chat. <laughs> Hi, so, Melanie. <laughs> so, there's, so there's like a saying, saying, speak of the devil <laughs> and the devil will appear. Uh, speak of the Adobe Live scheduling and, the, and Melanie will appear. Fantastic. <laughs> I want to add a little texture to the, I guess, pumpkin-ish area of the the house, the, yep. the orange part. I'm just going to make a rough selection here and then um, grab a brush that has some some texture to it um, on a layer. We've got a clipping mask and just going to do a little bit, just just so it's yeah, yeah so a little more organic. Yeah. I love the volume of, of pumpkins. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's better. Maybe around the windows a little bit. But I love just being able to try things and... I feel like um, digital art was one of the best things for me, even as a traditional painter, because just your ability to try things and test them out without necessarily committing to it. I feel like it made me a lot more daring of an artist, you know, than what I would be otherwise with just working in traditional meetings, uh, mediums. I'm going to add a couple more little plant details. Um, I like the idea of the light, the warm light shining on um, the different things growing around here. So I'm going to grab some twiggy plants. Oops. So I just picked this color because it was really easy for me to see what I'm doing, um, but I'm going to tone this down a bit. It's great leading. 
really, really good. It's nice with adding organic elements because you can mm. just use them to point into the focal point, um, draw the eye in certain directions, just erasing out a little bit. We'll arrange them where we want and then we'll um, color them a little bit more realistically. Like I can do the lock layer and grab a an airbrush and just kind of Oh, I went on dissolve mode. <laughs> Just do a little bit like this. A little more subtle. Mm -hmm. Great lead in. Love Thank it. Thank you. Uh, Bruce in the chat. Maddie sneaking in foliage is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so true true yeah in my sketch i had a little um cat in one of the windows and i think it would be fun to bring that in but just how the painting is gone i think i'm gonna move it to the other window um i think there's more of a sort of space that needs to be filled over here compositionally so yeah i think we'll put a little cat in the window there Is the silhouette. So if, um, do you listen to podcasts while you work? When you're yeah, not, sometimes yeah. I do, yeah. Mm. Or streams oh. or. Mandy scores 50,000 more points for putting a cat in the window. <laughs> yeah. I'll, um, I'll have to try and find it, find a link to it and send it to you. But there's, um, there's an interesting podcast about... I've suddenly got a Hansel and Gretel vibe going on. Oh. Uh, just there. Um, there's a fantastic podcast about the real Hansel and Gretel. That's cool. You know I've not heard story? of this. No. I think it's in two parts. In fact, you know what? I'm sat next to an enormous computer <laughs> <laughs> with a load of screens in front of me. Why don't I Google it for you? <laughs> But it's a very interesting story. The real Hansel and Gretel story. Very good. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay. Ah, oh, I think I know what it's in. I think it's in... Um, cautionary Tales. I'll find it. And, okay. uh, and I'll send you a link to it. But you'll enjoy it. It's a good warming, you know, warming story for this. So it's sort of a bit spooky. Cool. Intrigue. <laughs> All of that stuff that makes you think, oh, I'm glad I'm in the warm with my nearest and dearest and mm -hmm. you know, just painting. <laughs> Bringing in some mushrooms. Yes. another thing i enjoy seeing in the autumns all the different mushroom shapes and colors really interesting chris is saying i would definitely knock on that door hot chocolate or cider by the fireplace <laughs> probably right yes definitely i'm feeling cider it must be mm. about the oranges in this picture like the reds and orange colors yeah mm. Sudden burst of uh, mushroom emojis. <laughs> Biogaric. <laughs> the, everyone's favourite spectacular mushroom, the big red ones with the white spots. Yes. Yes. I, I remember seeing them for the first time in person a couple of years ago, and I was like, whoa, it's like the fairy yeah. tale mushrooms. <laughs> I know. They're amazing. Quite big, too. Okay. So... Oh, how are we doing on time? I just noticed. I think we're... We, um... are, we are just about to go into uh, extra time. But that's good. We've got a little bit more time if you want it. Okay. I think I think we're just about there, to be honest. Like, okay. Oh, except I lost my bat layer, which is very important. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yes. Cool. Now bat. it feels right. <laughs> I'm just going to pop into the chat the uh, link 
support the cautionary tales thing, the truth about oh, yeah. and Gretel. So that's in the chat. I'll send it across to you separately in a moment. There we are. But no, you let me know when you're ready, but this is... I'm going to add one last little little highlight in the window, yeah, and I think it. that's just about it. Yeah. So beautiful. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> oh, do us a big zoom in. Yeah, let's so zoom in. So we can in. see the whole thing. Yeah, let's go. Yes. So you can see the textures. It's a bit It's a bit messy when you zoom in, but... Yeah. You get, no, no, oops, no, but it's beautiful, hello. though. I love it. You know it. what there we did? We, we did a little channels there. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's so cool. Oh, thank you. It, do you know, I've, I I was very excited that we were going to be doing this today. Me and, too. Uh, great to see you and uh, and to watch you work again. Thank you so oh, much. Take me to a whole other zone for the day. <laughs> I love it. Everybody it always flies by. <laughs> it does. Everybody in the chats loved it too. Uh, so come along and join us tomorrow. I'm very sorry I didn't get a chance to have a look at what was on tomorrow. Got to get better at doing that. <laughs> The um, oh, Tim just said something in my ear, but I was so busy. Gig Russell Veers. Oh, so Julius and um, Russell Veers is on tomorrow. There we go. So that's something to look forward to. But Maddie, thank you so much thank you. for today. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, thanks everyone. So come along tomorrow. But for now, from Maddie and myself, it's ta -ta. bye everyone. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you.